And now for our feature presentation. Finally, the wait is over. The fantasy unfolds. It'll work. It'll work. For some, the verdict is already in. The biggest surprise was to see all of them together at the end playing Pinochle and having a great time. I wish that was there, and I'm going to try to get a part of the next movie myself. This has left me practically utterly speechless, actually, you know, but it was the best one ever. The big surprise was seeing Dark Vader unveil himself to his son. It was very exciting. The biggest surprise, well, I don't want to give it away to anybody. Do you think it was worth coming to this late at night? Yeah. yeah. Good over to you, always. The movie no, was perfect. It was exactly the way it had to be. It was a fantastic movie, but it was good. It was really, really good. Just know, it's the worst of the original films, but it's still a really good movie. There's just many signs of Lucas's writing slowly starting to decrease in quality. Yeah, it's like poetry, it's sort of Here's where the problem lies, the pacing. By far the worst of the original trilogy when it comes to this aspect. When it comes to George Lucas's world building, it's always fascinating. The problem he has is that he spends way too much time on it, which isn't a total bad thing, but it can become problematic when the flow of the film starts to crumble on how much it drags. Jabba's palace is definitely not the biggest location in Star Wars, so it causes things to become boring and stale quite fast when you spend an excessive amount of time in this one place. I do love the look of it all, the tight corridors, the place oozing with creepy aliens, how dusty and antique it all looks. During those first 15 minutes is the time to get accustomed to it all. I don't have a problem with the aesthetic at all, but then it keeps going and going and they finally rescue Han and complete the mission at the 37 minute mark out of the 2 hour and 14 minute long film. There's bits and pieces sprawled throughout to keep things interesting, Luke igniting the green saber for the first time, Luke versus the Rancor, and then there's moments sprawled throughout to keep things as lame as possible, like Boba Fett going out like a little bitch and whatever drugs Lucas was on to include this shit. <laughs> Overall, the location and setting is well done. There's not a singular boring Star Wars location, but spending this much time doing this rescue mission honestly hurts the movie. Then once we get out of Jabba's palace, the Empire's plan is revealed. Ooh man, what are they gonna do this time? It couldn't be the same plot from two movies ago. I hear they're gonna build a new one, though. It's gonna be almost as big. Yeah, eight times as big. Eight times as big. Yeah. Haven't we learned anything? Well. It is, and the Empire is building another space station, and there lies my other problem with Return of the Jedi. It feels uninspired. The fact that we are rehashing their plan a second time just feels absurd and it's repetitive even though this was only three movies in at this point when it released. Luke travels to Dagobah to visit Yoda seeking the truth about Darth Vader. Everything dealing with Luke in this movie is always the film's strong point. Empire Strikes Back is my favorite Star Wars movie of all time due to the slow build and character development of Luke as a person, and it all blows up when we find out the revelation of Darth Vader being Luke's father. I talk a lot more about that in my Star Wars ranking though. The movie gives off that beautiful slow building arc that felt fully fleshed that was present at Empire whenever Luke is dealing with the tribulations of Vader being his father in this movie. Yoda passes away and we even get a more surprising truth that was teased at the end of Empire with Luke being Leia's brother, and Leia might be force sensitive. That also means... <laughs> Somehow, I've always known. When he comes back, I won't get in the way. He's my brother. Anyway, things in the movie finally are getting back on track. Despite that long Han rescue, another Death Star, and whatever this was, the movie is becoming focused again until we reach the forest moon of Endor. Here we're introduced to a plethora of cool things. Scout troopers, ATSTs, the planet itself, speed bikes, and of course, the Ewoks. The Ewoks are so adorable. So, so adorable. The problem is, they're too adorable, and it ruins any threat the Empire has. The Empire was this unstoppable force in the previous film. Yes, the Stormtroopers have an always will suck at aiming, but it's hard to believe that they actually are taking L's from Ewoks, the literal equivalent of Build-A-Bears. 
When the final act is happening, here's what we have. A cool space battle, but it's tied down to another rehashing of the Death Star, Stormtroopers getting their asses handed to them by Ewoks, and Luke confronting Vader, trying to turn him to the good side, with the Emperor pulling the strings of both their emotions. Every singular time we see Luke's dilemma, it's a masterpiece. Also, I love Emperor Palpatine as a character. He is the pure definition of Sinister, and his voice is iconic. Oh, I'm afraid the deflector shield will be quite operational when your friends arrive. Jeez, you don't have to be a dick about it. Whenever it's dealing with these three in a room, it feels like I'm watching an amazing Star Wars movie. Then when it comes back to the other plots, it's okay, I guess. But you can't change any of these two plots with the Ewoks or Space Battle because they're all tied together with the Emperor, making this frustrating whenever it cuts back and forth between the two when I just want to watch the Luke stuff. The chicken walkers are cool as hell, don't get me wrong, and I love how cheesy yet fascinating those space battles are, but compared to Luke's story, it doesn't hold up that well. Empire juggled this type of thing better, Luke and Darth Vader and Han meeting his end. It worked well because they weren't happening at the same time. Whenever Luke is on Dagobah and Han and the gang are traveling to Bespin, these events occur at the exact same time. But in the final act of each of these plots, they happen before or after each other with rarely any cutting back and forth between them, meaning each plot point gets fleshed out the fullest by the end. The cutting back and forth with the cliche Death Star and adorable Ewoks cut out the raw emotion happening with Luke and the villains. You have the best fight scene in the original trilogy where Vader finally pushes Luke to the limit and he takes out all of his anger and throws away the core lightsaber training he knows and uses pure anger. I love the detail of him cutting Vader's hand off and him looking in shock. Even through that mask you can imagine the emotion on his burnt face. And Vader's sacrifice by throwing his boss down is truly epic as the big baddie of the Star Wars universe has redeemed himself out of love for his son. One single detail that is so perfect is the fact that when a station is being destroyed, no one helps Vader. Not a single person. There are many great things about this movie, but a lot of it feels clunky and should have gotten a second draft in a lot of places. It was great. People were just cheering and screaming and yelling and clapping. It uh, answered a lot of questions, but not all of them. There's enough to keep you wanting more. I'm a new woman. <laughs> it's the truth. Good prevails. We will all conquer. It's very good. No, it, it was definitely the greatest science fiction movie ever made. I mean, I was right in I there. I mean, follow. Lucas. Total genius, all the way. The sound, the visual, I, it was a total experience. I mean, it's sort of like Star Wars. You want to go see it over and over again. You think you're going to be back for more? Mm, for sure, as soon as I get back from London. Return of the Jedi is a good Star Wars movie, but as a film, the flow could have been a lot better.